my name is Stefan, uh, Belgian born, Belgian raised, and very early in my life I got into the Belgian beer culture, which I got to love a lot, and I got to love all the beers from the world after that. Uh, you know, my, my career path has been primarily around ingredients with hops, and uh, I worked for more than 20 years in the hop industry. I created my own brewery in Belgium uh, that I ran for more than 15 years, and I've been in charge of a wonderful company now for the last 10 years, which is called Fermentis, and that's the company I'm with here uh, on, the exhibition, on this exhibition. First of all, we are very lucky, uh, very lucky to do the magic. We do the magic around beer. You know, you can supply hops, you can supply malt, you use water, you use a number of other ingredients. They're all kind of inert components that deliver a lot of value. I'm not saying they're not delivering value, but we actually at Fermentis, we manufacture the microorganisms that will bring it all together and compose, put the final in developing uh, a fermented beverage. So we develop microorganisms and derived products thereof to either ferment and produce a beer or to characterize a beer, to reinforce the sensory characteristics. Also in some cases we provide nutritional products to help the fermentation process in beer manufacturing. Um, so we are very passionate uh, about beer, about the sensory characteristics of beer, about the flavor, the aromatics, the color, perception in the mouth, uh, all the dimensions that make you enjoy a beer and somehow we have the chance with our products, with our yeast, with our bacteria, with our yeast derivatives, we have the chance to contribute to reinforce those aspects and help a brewer develop these magical, wonderful, enjoyable products based on all the other ingredients. Uh, you know, the yeast, we consider it always as a micro plant, a microscopical plant that will absorb nutrients that will absorb components, that will biotransform others, and again, it will put it all together and assemble this wonderful product beer uh, in the end that you will enjoy at home, in a bar, in a hotel, in a restaurant, anytime, with friends or alone even. Uh, it's always a pleasure. So. Uh, we, yeah, we have the tendency to believe that we're standing apart. You know, we have, I think, first of all, uh, we have been driving this journey for implementation of yeast and the usage of yeast for beer diversification uh, in the last 10 to 20 years. You know, in fact, uh, before, after the Second World War, there has been a trend towards beer produ mass production of beer and uniformity of flavors and so on. And it's really in the 80s and the 90s that hop forward beers have started to appear and diversification of beer has happened through the hopping of the beer. And now with Fermentis, uh, we have really tried hard for the last 10, 15 years to also use yeast as a main driver to create the signature of, of a beverage. For that, uh, we are developing uh, a wide range of microorganisms. So we have it all. We have the Saccharomyces cerevisiae, the non-Saccharomyces, we have the bacteria, we have the yeast derivatives, and we have also some newer products coming up, which will be very interesting, very innovative, that are truly drivers in this differentiation of beers. That's for one. And for the other one, uh, you know, we also believe that in a sustainable world, uh, we have to get more and more into to respond to society's expectations, to respond to brewers' expectations. Uh, we have to get aligned, and we have already done several developments that are truly available and demonstrating our contribution to a more sustainable world in the beverage industry. One of them is uh, easy to use. Easy to use allows a brewer to save on water, to save on detergents, to save on capital expenditure. Uh, it allows actually to have a more sustainable environment for beer production. Another, another example of that is you know, using yeast derivates, uh, yeast components, natural components, natural ingredients, as a replacement for semi-synthetical or even synthetical products for certain applications in characterizing you. So there are different ways that we can contribute to, which makes us also truly stand apart from others uh, in, in that respect. Well, it's at different speeds, you know. 
that's why I'm asking the question because obviously you always have leaders and you have always countries or areas in the world where a trend appears and the trend then disseminates across the world. Uh, and you have always different degrees, various degrees of establishment. You know, I, you know, I, like I said in the introduction, you know, I've been versed into the brewing industry for the last 45 years, basically, and with a strong establishment in Belgium, which has a strong beer culture. The Belgian brewing industry is a very long-standing industry with very traditional products. The newer products have been have had a tougher time to come. In fact, what we realized is that an industry like the American, North American industry, inspired itself tremendously from beers manufactured in Germany, in England, uh, in Belgium. They imported those beers and they modified them according to their own recipe. They started to make them more hop forward, for example, taking traditional styles but making them more forward. Developing also uh, the IPA, the Indian Pale Ale that today everyone knows, with all the diversity of IPAs that you can find. It can be New England IPA, West Coast IPA, Cold IPA, and so Brut IPA, and so on and so on. And what has happened is that these newer beers, uh, optimization, optimized maybe, or varied, or changed from the original recipes, these newer recipes are re-exporting throughout the world. Europe has taken them on quite quickly in countries like Italy, Sweden, Holland, uh, France today. I mean, it's a growing business. And then you have other areas in the world which are truly following as well. You know, uh, areas like uh, China, like India, for example, you have these trends appearing. You know, last night I attended, you know, the, the, the how you call it, the uh, award ceremony for the Indian brewers. And obviously you could see that there were a lot more beers entered in the new England IPA category or IPAs categories than in some more traditional categories. So there is that trend changing uh, or creating a new ecosystem, as you say, in these newer markets, uh, creating, helping also people to be innovative, creative and creative. You know, I, I'm, I, you'll never believe me if I tell you that this is my very, very first time in India. You know, I've traveled the world for more than 30 years and I've never come to India before. So I was a bit anxious, I was curious, and I was very interested to land in India and spend the whole week here to truly understand the culture, to understand the state of the industry and what the potential is. And, you know, I've experienced uh, evolution of markets, uh, significant evolution of markets throughout the last 30 years in different regions of the world. And landing here and spending time in New Delhi, in Bangalore, and with Brewers, we've also our partner, supplier, uh, and other companies and other people uh, in the business. I've, I truly believe that uh, this industry and especially the craft industry in India uh, has a lot of potential, a lot of future. It was probably it was it had, it had reached a certain momentum before the COVID pandemic, and I think the pandemic has probably slowed it down. And there is a bit of people start to find themselves again and reestablish themselves and get going again. And I could feel, though, a lot of enthusiasm from the established people and some people having big projects to grow and develop, and newer people coming in. And I think, you know, beer is a product that has always federated, that has always made people come together, spend good times together. There's such a diversity in the beer world. with different kinds of spirits, different kinds of styles, different kinds of way of working, and that brings people together. And I think this community, Indian community, the largest in the world almost, uh, you know, it's going to be dynamized also by the industry. And I think people will recognize that and that will make things grow in the world. It's, uh, it's a very interesting experience. I think it's a, it's a great initiative. Uh, as I said last night, you know, I, I gave a, I made a little thank you note towards the organizers. I think they are visionary. I think they, they do it well. Uh, it's quite professional. Uh, they organize a very nice platform to have people meet, brewers together, but also brewers with suppliers. Uh, it's a great balance between, you know, academic or let's say presentations, so for people to learn about specific topics and a platform where the people, attendants can meet suppliers and exchange like on this wonderful booth that you have in front of you 
the Fermentis booth. So it's it's quite well organized. Uh, I'm say I was a bit disappointed maybe by the attendance in terms of number and quantity, but probably because of this post pandemic and the last one happened only eight months ago. So it's just a question of time and, and, and people getting in balance again in their activity. Uh, I have a lot of hope and a lot of belief that in the future this event will continue to develop because again it's professional, it's well structured, well organized. Uh, it's the platform also, it's the the, the home of the, the Brewers Awards, uh, which is a great competition that I encourage really brewers to, to participate in. And all of this, I think, will continue to develop. And we've been talking to the organizers about that. Uh, there's many ways that things can still evolve and, and develop. So please, come to the Brewers World Conclave.